Hello and a very warm welcome to another episode of The Head Coach with me, Daniel. It's Season 3, Episode 7, and after a gap of, I think, about a week, we're finally turning our attention back to the league following our magical FA Cup run. We're hoping to replicate our success from last season where we managed to sneak a playoff place and you can see at the moment from the table in the bottom left of the screen we're just about on course to do that but we're only sneaking in on goal difference at the moment. Before we start our big double header away to playoff rivals Eastleigh and playoff contenders just below us Maidstone at home let's go and look at what's been happening since you were last with me. So no transfers to talk about, no calamities financially, dynamics off the pitch, nothing like that. So let's just have a look at our results. We played seven league games since the last time you were with us. And first of all, after our FA Cup defeat to Peterborough, we lost 3-0 away at Wrexham. It was a bit of a hangover from that cup tie, to be honest. We didn't look at the races at all, and we were soundly beaten. We also lost our following home game, and I'll give you a clue. It was against Grimsby. And that one's just a little inside joke for those of you who also listen to my ramblings over on the Honest Football Podcast. But thankfully, after this awful Grimsby performance, we got back to winning ways against Bromley. A 3-1 away win, and Jonah Ryunga, as usual, was the hero. Scoring a hat-trick, finished with a pen penalty in stoppage time. We then got absolutely battered at Gateshead. We seem to have a problem against this team. We got battered in the FA Cup trophy for uh, Bognor Regis in the first season. We then lost our first ever game at Dover against Gateshead 3-0 and next season we're not doing any better. It's 4-1 away from home and we need to stop playing Gateshead as soon as possible if we want success in this career. We then got a narrow victory, back to winning ways in a home game against Whitehawk. Oliver Shackleton getting back on the score sheet out of the blue. He'd barely played a game for about three months, which shows you there's probably an injury crisis coming. And we also battered Mansfield at home, which was a real surprise. They're right up there at the top of the league. There was no luck involved. We were just by far the better team. And in the last game, we had a very disappointing 3 0 against Southport. You can see we were 3 1 up with 10 minutes to go, but they scored two goals in two minutes against our awfully leaky defence after Boateng was taken off with an injury. All of that means we sit in 7th place in the league, and somehow Ryan Bird is still clinging on as the top scorer in the competition with 21 league goals so far, added to his 4 in that magical FA Cup run. But let's get straight into the first game today. We're against Eastleigh away from home. We've not been particularly strong away from home in recent games, and Eastleigh are also challenging for a playoff place. They're up in four three points ahead of us, so this is going to be a very difficult game. You can see, surprise, surprise, Mitch Brundle suspended again. He's got a three-match bad this time because he's managed to accumulate 15 yellow cards by the start of March in all competitions. So he's going to be out for a few more. I think that takes his suspension tally this season up to 12 games. We've also got recent goal scorer Shackleton out injured and the biggest loss of them all is Daniel Boateng at centre half who's out injured for a few weeks. It means we're back down to 18 fit players so our lineup for today as a result will be Mitch Walker in goal, a back four of Pike, Parry, Galifuco and Senior, Tracy and Hall on the wings with Ashby and Liam Bellamy deputising in centre midfield with Idar and a younger up front, Ryan Bird's been in good form but he's just starting to struggle a bit with his age, so we've dropped him due to a poor training performance. But he is on the bench should we need to call upon him, and he's alongside Pasley, Ilasami, Pinnock and Coventry. Let's get straight into it. We're playing against a very dodgy 3-5-2. I always hate playing against them. I struggle so much. And I think I saw they had the free tass in midfield. There he is. Those of you following my golden generation save will know that he's been an excellent performer for us on that with Stockport County. And he's got about 20 assists to his name. So let's hope he doesn't replicate that form today. But we've got the early possession from the kickoff. Ashby's got it in a holding role. Can he find some quality? Switches the play out to Shiloh Tracy, who's really acclimatised to that role on the right quite well. We didn't have him starting too often last year with Wernadio there, but he's got no competition at all this year. We've tried Pinnock on the right a couple of times, but just cutting back on that left, it's really slowed our attacks down. And we've really built all of our success on counter-attacking and running off the high balls and the flick-ons. So that's why Tracy stays in. Ryan Hall's starting to dip a little bit. Pinnock's made a couple of appearances on the left as well. But Hall's still our best option overall. And we're coming away now with Tracy. Can he bring the ball away and create an attack? He finds Idar into a younger. He's through one-on-one, but he's taken a bit wide. And as a result, his finish isn't great. And it's tipped wide comfortably. 
Body Easterly goalkeeper. Here's Ryan Hall's delivery, but it's headed away to Tracy. A younger's got it 12 yards out, but that's a good challenge and it's cleared away. Always a risk sliding in there, but he made it comfortably, the Easterly defender. And now on the counter attack, we look worryingly bad again. Holland's again from the free tass and it's gone wide to the left. The ball's in the box, but we've headed it away. A bit of head tennis in the penalty area for us. We don't look quite as confident as we had in recent games. We have had the only clear cut chance of the game through uh, Jonah Younger there with the one on one. But Eastley have had the better of the game still overall. Here's Idar. Gets the ball from a younger. Can he bring it forward? He's back to Tracy. Ashby with a lovely switch of play yet again to Hall. Wonderful early delivery to a younger. And what a header. Off the bar and in. Ryan Hall proves that he's worth that place on the team with a wonderful cross to the back post. And Jonah Younger is surely going to catch Ryan Bird as the top goal scorer in all competitions soon. I think he's had a couple more in the FA Cup, so he might not overtake him in the league. But he's been brilliant for us. But as I speak, he's still straight on the counter-attack. But Mitch Walker carries away with that cross. And he's going to clear it long up for the striker. And can we win a flick-on? It's the one problem not having Ryan Bird in. We don't win the flick-ons as much. But Senior gets it into the channel. And there's a younger's benefit with the pace in behind. But his cross is poor and Heyman deals with it. And with half an hour gone, we're looking fairly comfortable, to be honest. I'm not too disappointed with how we played so far. After throwing away the game against uh, Maidstone away from home, I think it was in the last game. No, it wasn't. It was Southport. Getting my teams mixed up. I knew they were a team with a yellow badge. But it, nevertheless, we did throw away the game from 3-1. And it was dra it was straight after Daniel Boateng went off injured. And we were left with Galafuco at the back alongside Parry. And he made an absolute howler, misjudging a ball for their second goal. Mitch Walker deals with the ball in behind from Eastley. They can't get through our two banks of four. They're trying to create chances for out of nothing. And it's just going through to the keeper most of the time. Here we've won the ball back from the goal kick. Ashby and Senior playing a 1-2, but now Ryan Hall clears down the left. A younger's not getting that in a million years as it's back to the keeper. And it's cleared long away, but Manny Parry, how many times have we said that this season? Big and strong in the air, winning the header every time. Pike's got the ball in a right-back position and sends a dodgy, bouncy ball back to Walker, who does well to bring it under control and clears after bringing it away. But De Freitas wins the header for them. Candy and Swan, their front two are combining. De Freitas again into the edge of the box. He's starting to look like a danger man for them. And their cross goes in. And Galifuco, as I speak about the errors, gives away a penalty for a stupid trip. The cross was going straight back to the keeper anyway. And now they've scored a penalty with the centre-half putting it in the top corner brilliantly. What a finish that was. But unbelievable. Every time that Daniel Boateng's out, we start to let in goals again. And I've got no replacement for Galifuco at centre-half. Bar past, who's unhappy. But we're straight in behind with Ryan Hall. And what a save that is. He really should have scored that. He had half the goal to aim at. But he's chosen to go straight down the near post and the keeper saves. The cross in again and it's headed by Ashby but it's straight at the keeper. It was a lovely pass into Ashby whose form starting to pick up again. As we head away the corner and Eastley are coming forward and looking far more dangerous now. And they've had a 1-2 into the box but Hunter's put it wide for them. They've definitely had the better of the game but re weirdly for these sort of games we've had more possession. Which I don't think we've had away from home for some time. It is half time then 1-1. One, one. The one concern is that Bellamy's booked in centre midfield. We'll think about bringing Coventry on for him around the hour mark because we don't need any more red cards in centre midfield. We certainly don't need more suspensions, whether it be through yellows or reds. But here we go. He had away the long ball, but De Freitas is mopping up in there for them. The ball's wide to burn. They're comfortable in possession now. They're really starting to dominate this game, and we're starting to look like we're out of legs a little bit, to be honest. And here they go. They've found the extra man over on the right. They've crossed to Swan, the centre forward, and Mitch Walker makes a fantastic save, and it's behind for an Eastley corner. It's going to be delivered by De Freitas, who seems to be their key man. It's knocked down, but it's going to be headed away. Can Parry close the ball down? It's crossed in by Swan, but Hall clears for a throw-in. We're five minutes into the second half now, and we've got an attack with Ashby. Into Jonah, a younger crosses for Idar, but his header down is far wide. It's an awful attempt, to be brutally honest. And we haven't looked like scoring, really, for the last 25 minutes of gameplay. And coming up towards the hour mark, we're going to have to start to think about changes. Bar Galifuco, no one's playing particularly badly, but we haven't had any real strong performances. As Ryan Hall with the free kick is a long way over. So one thing I will say for Hall's set-piece delivery, although it's better generally, he's finishing. He hasn't really scored goals from them or looked threatening from chances from 25 yards. 
but out wide he's looked really strong and from corners in particular as a younger gets in behind from a pumped clearance and can he get the ball back to Ashby switches for Tracy that's a cracking ball Josh Ashby's back to his best today can Tracy deliver to Idar and he's flicked header at the near post it's just over the bar and that is probably going to be his last action as we look to take Idar off we'll switch a younger over and bring on top scorer in the league bird We'll take Bellamy off as well for Coventry, as we mentioned before, and we'll save the last one for another 20 minutes or so. They've had a centre forward off injured Swan, who's caused us a bit of trouble. Ryan Cresswell, an experienced centre half, was that? That's a bit of a weird change. But they've gone long, high and wide from a 25-yard shot. He's playing up front, so maybe he's not a centre half. But oh well, we've cleared it with a goal kick. Ryan Bird wins the flick on. That's something that wasn't happening in the first half. Coventry's lost out in the middle though. And they seem to be countering us quite easily here. They've got the extra man in midfield. And it's starting to pay dividends for them. Normally at this point I'd think about bringing on Boateng. They've scored. They've got in down the right again. And Candy's had a tap in. That Teddy Howe on the right for them has looked a really good player. I was saying before that normally at this sort of point we drop Boateng or Galifuco into a holding midfield role and play with the three in midfield to match up. But with one of them injured we haven't got the option because Galifuco is playing at centre half and we haven't got Boateng available. But Cresswell's bringing it away for them again. They look like they're comfortable now and Howe again on the right hand side's got him free. Crosses for Candy and he's missed by a whisker this time. It's hit the side netting. But they are all over us now. I'm going to have to stop and have a look at Teddy Howe because he looks a really good player. Look how quick he is. He's getting in behind. No wonder. He's got seven assists this season already, so we can't complain about his performance too much. Ryan Hall gets it in, though, for Bird. Can he find a younger in the middle? He doesn't, but he finds Tracy, and it's straight at a keeper. It's not the man we really wanted that to fall to. Tracy's not the best in front of goal, and he proved as much there. And we're going to look at going attacking after this attack for Eastley, unless we get it away. Coventry to Ashby. Big long ball up to Ryan Bird. Brings it down lovely, but then ridiculously tries to shoot from 40 yards. I think he got a bit cocky after the touch there and thought he was God's gift for some moment. But there we go. They've got the big long kick up. De Freitas is fouled. And, oh, not fouled. Coventry gets away with it. Pike clears for a younger down the right. Can he get the ball into the box? He doesn't, but he switches to Hall into the area and he's shot straight at a keeper again. Let's go all out attack now. We're going to go attack him. We're going to do the usual. Run at the defence, and we're going to play a little bit wider now, just to see if we can force Teddy Howe back a little bit. If Ryan Hall can keep his width, then hopefully Howe will either get forced backwards or just cut inside and make a meal of it. Ryan Bird's got in from the long ball, and he's got... Oh, he's offside. He got in behind. It looked a bit easy there, and that's the reason he was a few yards offside. But with five minutes to go, we have started to have a couple of attacks again. You can see, in terms of chances and possession, it's been a fairly even game. But they've had the better of it, we have to be honest. And they've shot again from 25 yards, and it's gone high and wide. And with a couple of minutes to go, I don't think we're going to get the goal. We've just not been on form in front of goal, and we've been a bit weaker than normal at the back. You can see Galifuco's having an absolute nightmare. Pike's got a throw in last chance with a couple of minutes to stop his time. Ashby's picked it up 35 yards out. Finds Bird. It's in, it's 2 all. What a finish by Ryan Bird. The man turns into super sub and surely he'll keep his place at the top of the goal scoring charts for this league now. Not a bad effort for a 32 year old. And we are absolutely delighted if we can nick a point out of this. I just realised I've forgotten to go back defensive and thankfully Cresswell's one on one saved. But Howe's back again. We're going to make sure we go back to our defensive tactic here. And we're going to go more defensive than normal. More disciplined and waste time. See if we can get away with it. Bird's got on the end of a big long boys foul. That's got to be a red. He's in one on one. Surely that's a red card. And it is. It's a cheeky, dirty move by their centre half. I cannot believe that. Ryan Bird was in and surely we would have nicked the game. You can see why their centre half's done it. But that's such a dirty move for football. And Ryan Hall takes the free kick and it's come to nothing. Oh, I'm so annoyed at that. Don't you hate it when a centre half does that? But they easily kick it away. We've won the header and it's down to Hall. Bird's got one last chance to put it through, but he has been challenged and they've been forced backwards. At least at least Hal was forced back into right back for the last couple of minutes. But we have managed to get a point with a late equaliser. We're a little disappointed that Ryan Bird was hacked down when he was through one-on-one, -on -one, as we surely would have won the game. But a point away to a team that were started the game in fourth place is surely a good result. They're down to sixth now, but we're still in the playoffs by a point with just eight games to go in the season. Let's go and have a quick look at what they've said about it. They've said it's not gone down as one of our finest hours drawing against 10 men, but it was for two minutes of the game. And it was the reason they went down to 10 men was because they deliberately stopped us winning the game. So I'm not happy with that. 
But enough about that. We've got a double header to squeeze in here. So we'll be back in a minute for the Maidstone game. OK, we're back for the home game against Maidstone in the second of today's double header. You can see in the last week we've slipped down to ninth place as a couple of other teams have played their 39th game already. But if we win today, we'll be back in the playoff places, no problems. Maidstone are just a place and a point below us, so the same applies to them really. We're competing to finish this day in seventh place. Although they do seem to have a little bit more of a goal difference problem than us. Now let's go and have a quick look at the team. Only one change from the last game. Bird's in up front after his late heroics for Adam Idar. The rest of the team's the same. It's Walker in goal, Pike Parry, Galifuco and Senior. Josh Pasley picked up a knock in the under-23 game the other day, so any temptation we had of dropping Galifuco is now gone because he's not fully fit. We've got Tracy and Hall on the wings, Ashby and Bellamy who's still deputising for Brundle in the middle, and Jonah Iunga back with the returning Ryan Bird up front. Let's get straight into it. The bench is the same, but I'd half a bird. Here we go. We're playing against a 4-3-3, another formation we struggle against at this level. We're going to encourage them to try and get back into a playoff place, but the manager at Maystone will be saying exactly the same thing. I think on this game it's still Jay Saunders, despite the dispute in real life at the moment. Parry heads away the early ball, and Bellamy knocks it back to Ashby, but the highlight ends. Early knockdown, no real gauge of how the game's going to go from that. Hall has an early corner, puts it in, it's headed away, but Parry gets there first. Can we find some quality with Josh Ashby? Lovely switch of play out to Tracy on the right. Bellamy finds a younger. Can he get the ball in for Bird? He does. Bird heads, and that's a wonderful save. What a save by the Maidstone keeper. And the ball's headed away and the highlight ends. But 10 minutes in, that's the first clear chance of the game. And in fact, the only shot on goal so far. Ryan Hall tries a spectacular from the corner. And then again a second time. When will they learn? It's the one thing on this game, even if you haven't got long shots on, they always shoot from 25 yards after a corner. And I know at this level most players see their name in lights, the same as Sunday League, non-league, semi-pro. They all see their name in lights and go for it. I know I was guilty of it as a centre-half. But you can't have it every single time, surely. And to be fair, I've played at the higher levels on this game and it's the same. It's my one real complaint with the gameplay. We're about 20 minutes in now and there's not really been too much to it. Maidstone haven't had a shot on target, which is the most important thing. But we've only had that one that was a great save from the keeper. Bellamy's going to get it in. Surely a younger Zimbley was offside if it had reached him. Dodgy pass back to the keeper. I thought that was going to be an own goal for a minute. They've got Pike up front, but it's headed away. I hope that's not Rakhile Pike because he's a blimmin' good player. But there we go, Galifuco mops up, does better than the last game this time, and Parry brings it away to Ashby, who switches it again to Tracy. He's looked so good the last couple of games. Gets her younger in behind, can he cross for Bird again? This time Bird misses the target. I was about to say he makes no mistake, it looked like it was going in. But unfortunately it was just past the post, and it's still nil-nil. But we've looked really good in this game so far. Big long clearance, but it's been knocked down by Maidstone, and they're through in behind again. Galifuco loses out in the air, but thankfully it just falls at Mitch Walker's feet. Big long clearance up towards Ryan Bird. He knocks it down for a younger. Can we get runners in behind him? He's gone back to Pike. Ball into the box. It nearly reached Hall, but it was headed away at the back stick by Maidstone. We've got Ashby going forward now with Ryan Hall in behind again. Can he deliver? A younger's there, but it's back at the keeper again. We're not forcing the keeper into many great saves despite having all the running. Parry heads away. Maidstone's attacking free kick. Pike brings it away to Bird. A younger's on the opposite flank if he can find him. He does. Now we've got two coming into the box at the back stick. Into Bird. Oh, he hasn't missed that. You've got to be joking. He's a yard out. I know it looked like his left foot, but it's gone miles over. Great play again on the counter attack. We've looked so dangerous in this half. Hopefully you can see how Ryan Bird's been dropped in the last few games. But it is half time. Bellamy's picked up his customary booking covering in central midfield. We're encouraging them again despite the poor reaction to it. And hopefully the second half will see the breakthrough eventually. Tracy brings it forward from the kickoff to Bird, but he's challenged and it's back to the keeper. We've got a couple of other things to talk about off topic while we're here. First of all, we have had our youth intake. I hadn't forgotten it. The one thing to note from it was that there was absolutely no one of quality at all. We had one player who was rated more than half a star and he just scraped the one star. And no one had more potential than one and a half star ability. And there were a couple that had the little grayed out star that would have made it two star. But uh, nothing worth talking about really. They've got him behind first time. What's the keeper doing? He's just, he's just walked out of the way and said, here you go, son, pass it in. Oh, you can't be doing that. And after all our dominance, we've lost a goal. I'm going to make the changes, and I'm going to have to anyway, because Senior's just picked up a knock. We've got Ilasami, you can come straight in for him. And how has it all gone so wrong? 
We played so well in the first half. We'll bring Pinnacon on the right, and we're going to take Bird off because he's been absolutely shocking today. And I'm sorry, I know he's a top scorer in the league, but that's only because we create chances to him. He's been absolutely poor in front of goal for the last couple of months now. Ian Maidstone are bringing it forward again. They're getting through us so easily, and this super sub on the left wing, it looks like Alex Pike doesn't want to mark him. And he scored the goal, and he's getting forward again. And it is Rakhal Pike up front, and he did set up that goal with a lovely pass. The other thing to talk about is we had a job interview during the week. We had an interview at Port Vale who were struggling in League 2. Unfortunately, we were rejected for it in the end. They gave it to someone else. As Pike's in again and it's cleared away. But what's happened to us since the goal? We've fallen apart. It would have been a nice move. Port Vale's a much bigger club in terms of stature. But we will keep an eye out for the summer to try and get a move. Because this will be two years in a row we've overachieved, even if we don't make the playoffs. We're only expected to finish in mid-table, don't forget. And that's the mid-table board expectation that basically means top of the bottom half. And we're going to finish well above that. So I'm a, I, we can't have any complaints. I know we like to think about it because we're in the playoff places. A younger gets in, but the keeper's mopped up very quickly there. We often think about it bottling it because it seems to fall apart towards the end of the season. But we're a part-time side who just runs out of steam. Hall puts another great ball in for Idar, who heads it straight at the keeper. We really need to get ourselves to a professional club because then I think we wouldn't run out of gas towards the end of the season. We'd be able to cope with a couple of competitions and maybe even get an FA Trophy win under our belts. I am looking at bigger clubs. I'm not applying for everything because I'm not eager to leave Dover. I'm having a good time here. But one thing I would look out for is clubs that have got stature or facilities or a good stadium. So, for example, when I went for the Port Vale job, there was also a job at Crawley at the bottom of League 2. And I just thought, you know, they're a 6,000 seater. They're not much like us. As we go 2-0 down, and maybe I need to be in more of a rush to get out of here. The second half, for a pile pikes just come to the party and torn us to shreds. We're going to go attacking like we did in the last game. So let's try and get the big clearance and see if we can get on with it. The younger's got the ball on the counter. And Ryan Hall gets the ball on the left. Pinnock gets it from the switch and tries to find the front man. But it's headed away to Bellamy. Reminds me a couple of weeks ago, the game between United and Tottenham, where United were 0-0 at half-time and they played absolutely brilliantly, and then Tottenham ran away 3-0 in the second half, and then Jose Mourinho had, you know what, afterwards, a bit of a tantrum, moaning about respect and all of that lot. But this game is so parallel to that. We were brilliant in the first half, had useless strikers who couldn't put the ball in the back of the net, despite being our key players and our better play players. As they get in behind on the right, they've crossed it back, and it's 3-0, I have no idea how this happened, but now it's perfectly replicated that game I was talking about, as we have just collapsed after conceding the goal. Galifuco's been our worst rated player on the pitch again. He's got the least fitness of anyone on the pitch again, and I still have no one I can bring in for him. This is where it gets a bit tricky being just the head coach, not having any choice over your transfers, your contracts, who stays and goes, because it means I'm not able to bring in a centre-half, though I know we've needed it all season. Idar gets through and goal and puts it about 20 yards wide. He's been really poor for me, Idar. I know he scored about one in three, but I was expecting so much from him. He's so well rated. He's a top player at this level, and he just hasn't proven it at all. We're going into four minutes of stoppage time. We know it's game over, and I'm absolutely disgusted with how we've collapsed after the goal. We really need to get out of this club. I know I'm changing my tune very quickly, but the emotions are high on this one. It's not even. It's not due to what I'm doing at the moment. We played brilliantly in the first half, but we haven't got a good enough striker alongside Bird or a younger, and we haven't got a good enough centre half to replace Boateng when he's out injured. If those two are out, or either of them are out, we're in such an amount of trouble. We had Casey last year, but it's the same story again. We've lost three 0 We completely collapsed after the goal. Up to that point, we were absolutely brilliant. We're down in 10th now, two points off the playoffs, and we've got a big challenge on our hands to get back up there. Let's have a quick look at what they've said. They've said they struck lucky because, again, we had as much of the game as them, so at least they've picked it up in the media, which is fair. Jack Senior's is out for five weeks, so that'll be most of his season gone. And we've only got one left back at the club now, and the transfer window shut two days ago. So if we go and have a quick look at the schedule, we'll do the same as the last couple of seasons. If nothing interesting's happening, we'll come back on the last couple of days of the season as we try to wrap things up. If we get to a deciding point beforehand, then we will come back. But that will be all from this episode. A massive thank you for watching as always. If you did enjoy the video, please put a thumbs up on it. You can subscribe to the channel below for regular Football Manager content from this series every Monday to Thursday at 4.30pm, as well as other content on the channel. A big thanks for watching again, and we'll see you next time.